Since its launch in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has delivered the most incredible images, amazing and inspiring not only to scientists, but also the public. But the dozens of terabytes of data collected are more than just pretty pictures. They provide a glimpse of the universe, from objects as close as the moon to the most distant galaxies. With incredible photos of supernovae and nebulae in between, Below, we delve into the history of the telescope and its discoveries and reveal Hubble facts and the best images from the extraordinary observatory in our orbit. If you enjoy our videos, feel free to support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and get ready for many more fascinating videos in the future. The Launch of Hubble When Galileo first pointed a telescope at the sky in 1610, he had trouble seeing Saturn's rings, which are now visible even with very simple telescopes. Advances in optics eventually improved scientists' views of the planets, stars, and distant galaxies, but Earth's atmosphere still blocked much of the light for observers on the ground. Interesting fact, Larger telescopes are still placed on mountains, where the thinner atmosphere allows clearer images at higher altitudes. In 1946, shortly after World War II, astronomer Lyman Spitzer proposed sending a telescope into space that could overcome the limitations of ground-based observatories. It took a few more decades for the idea to gain enough support, and the National Academy of Science assembled a committee of scientists to evaluate the potential of a large space telescope. The committee published a document in 1969 that outlined the scientific benefits of a large space telescope and argued for its construction. The National Academy of Science turned its proposal to NASA, the only agency capable of making the large space telescope a reality. NASA had previously considered the idea of a space telescope, but was undecided about how large it should be and where to start. In 1971, George Lowe, then the agency's deputy administrator, gave the go-ahead for the Large Space Telescope Science Steering Group, and NASA soon began lobbying Congress to fund the effort. The expensive project was a hard sell, and funding was initially rejected by the House Appropriations Subcommittee in 1975. NASA then stepped up its lobbying efforts and won over the European Space Agency, which contributed to the cost. Congress finally appropriated funding for NASA's share of the Large Space Telescope in 1977. Development began almost immediately, and NASA planned to launch the telescope in 1983. But various production delays pushed the launch date back to 1986. In the meantime, the Large Space Telescope was renamed Hubble in honor of Edwin Hubble, an American astronomer who, among other things, determined that the universe extended beyond the boundaries of the Milky Way. The launch of the Hubble telescope was delayed yet again after the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded one minute after takeoff on January 28th of the year 1986, killing all seven astronauts aboard. It took two years before shuttle flights could resume and NASA could begin planning the Hubble launch once more. The world's first space telescope finally launched aboard Space Shuttle Discovery on April 24, 1990. It cost $1.5 billion to build, but additional costs were not far behind, both expected and unexpected. Major instruments on the Hubble telescope included the Wide Field Planetary Camera, the Godard High Resolution Spectrograph, GHRS, the Faint Object Camera, FOC, the Faint Object Spectrograph, FOS, and the high-speed photometer. Hubble had equipment problems right from the beginning. Images from the telescope came back so blurry that they were almost unusable. Hubble's primary mirror had a defect, a spherical aberration caused by a manufacturing error. The defect was tiny, only 1 50th the thickness of a sheet of paper, but large enough to cause major problems in taking images. It took three years for NASA to launch a repair mission. On December 2, 1993, 
The Space Shuttle Endeavour brought aboard a crew of seven to repair Hubble during a five-day spacewalk. Two new cameras, including the Wide Field Planetary Camera 2, WFPC2, which later captured many of Hubble's most famous photos, were installed and tested during the repair. In December 1993, Hubble's first new images reached the Earth, and they were nothing short of stunning. Hubble Discoveries Hubble's unique perspective and advanced optics make it possible to see farther into the distance than previous ground-based telescopes could. Because light takes time to travel great distances, the Hubble telescope's reach makes it function much like a time machine. The light it views from distant objects shows only what the object looked like when the light left it, not what it looks like today. So when we look at the Andromeda Galaxy, which is 2.5 million light years from Earth, we see it as it was 2.5 million years ago. For example, when astronomers pointed the Hubble telescope at a seemingly empty patch of sky in Ursa Major in 1995, they captured an image of more than 3,000 galaxies, too distant for other telescopes to detect. This find was later called the Hubble Deep Field. Some of the galaxies were so young that they had not yet begun to form stars. More deep field observations were made in the same area, each time looking deeper into space. These were called Hubble Ultra Deep Field, published in 2004, and Hubble Extreme Deep Field, published in 2012. In addition to looking at the early universe, Hubble also helped astronomers measure how much time had passed since the Big Bang. By measuring a special kind of pulsating star, known as a Cepheid binary, they were able to narrow the age of the universe from 10 to 20 billion years before the HST to 13.7 billion years. Hubble also studies individual stars at various stages of their evolution, starting with the dust clouds from which young stars form and progressing to the remnants of those that have long since exploded. It was even able to peer outside our galaxy, the Milky Way, and into its neighboring galaxies, the Magellanic Clouds and the Andromeda Galaxy. More difficult to see than stars are planets orbiting other suns. But in 2008, Hubble captured images of the planet Fummelhut b, the first time an extrasolar planet was imaged directly in visible light. Most planets, however, are more difficult to photograph. Much of the telescope's work with other planets is done by detecting their atmospheres as they pass in front of their suns. The atmosphere filters the light from the stars, and Hubble records the changes. While Hubble spends most of its time gazing into space, it occasionally takes the time to photograph the planets orbiting our Sun. High-resolution images of Jupiter, Saturn, and even Pluto can provide insights that can only be topped by planetary probes orbiting the planets. Hubble's images allow scientists on Earth to observe changes in the planet's atmospheres and surfaces. When comet Shoemaker-Levy slammed into Jupiter in 1994, Hubble photographed the fatal collision. The aftermath revealed a lot about the gas giant's atmosphere. In addition, Hubble saw what looked like plumes of water emanating from Jupiter's moon Europa. The telescope made an initial observation in March 2014 and then saw something similar in the same location in February 2016. In orbit for more than two decades, Hubble has given scientists a better understanding of the planets, the galaxy, and the entire universe. Some of Hubble's most amazing discoveries and research projects include the creation of a 3D map of mysterious dark matter, the discovery of Nix and Hydra, two moons of Pluto, helping to determine the expansion rate of the universe, discovering that nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole, helping to pinpoint the age of the universe, servicing missions. Hubble has been serviced several times. Servicing Mission 1, STS-61, December 1993. A corrective optics package was installed and the Wide Field Planetary Camera was replaced by the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2, including an internal optical correction system. 
computers were upgraded. Astronauts also replaced solar arrays, gyroscopes, magnetometers, computers, and other equipment. Surfacing Mission 2, STS-82, February 1997. Among other tasks, the astronauts installed the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, STIS, and the Near Infrared Camera and Multi-Object Spectrometer, NIC-MOS, replacing the GHRS and FOS. Servicing Mission 3, STS-103, December 1999. The third servicing mission was split into two parts after three of the six gyroscopes, or alignment devices, on Hubble failed. Just weeks before the launch of 3A, a fourth gyroscope failed, preventing the telescope from being pointed in the correct direction for observations. 3A replaced all gyroscopes, a fine control sensor, and the computer, among other things. Servicing Mission 4, STS-125, May 2009. This mission was initially scheduled for February 2005, but was canceled by NASA after the Space Shuttle Columbia was damaged during launch and broke apart during re-entry in 2003, killing seven astronauts. Hubble is in a different orbit than the International Space Station. If a shuttle were damaged during launch, there would be no safe haven to which astronauts could retreat in an emergency. However, after an outcry in Congress, the scientific community and the public, the Hubble mission was resumed and rescheduled for 2008. When one of Hubble's data processing units failed, the mission was postponed until 2009 to find a replacement for that part as well. Mission 4 astronauts repaired or replaced several systems and installed two new instruments, the Wide Field Camera 3 and the Cosmic Origin Spectrograph. What do you think when you see Hubble's stunning images from space? Feel free to leave us your thoughts in the comments.